I wanted to ask you and ask the viewers is, do you think it's worth keeping up with folks like Alex Hormozzi and watching all of his videos and consuming that content, you know, mm -hmm. because personally I'm of the mindset right now that I don't think it's that helpful. A lot of times, um, you should be a producer and not a consumer and carve your own path. And if you come up with a bottleneck in where you are, seek the answer and keep it moving. A lot of times we get sucked into cycles of consuming, consuming, consuming. And now you're just listening to what this other guy is saying about problems that are slightly nuanced in a different way that apply to him and not necessarily to you. And you're taking so-and-so's dating advice about, you know, oh, you should break up with your girlfriend if she does this, but really they're not in your situation. So you can't just like blindly follow what everyone else is telling you to do in life, business, dating, anything like that, and just take it because your situation is unique. I think you should produce and live your own life and find what works for you. And um, if you do come up with a bottleneck or see that a new reality is is possible outside of what you're currently doing, you know, say Alex Hermosi says like, yo, I've done a million a month from ads, you know, and this whole time I've been only doing organic content, then sure, I'll, I'll take that advice and I'll, you know, uh, I'll learn from that, that person and see that something else is out there. But I'm not going to only follow this person and follow them consistently because that is going to very much add up over time. And all of that advice and things like that is going to just not be applicable to where you are exactly. So I think like you should be doing like 90% producing and living your own life and only like 10% content, um, maybe 10, 20, um, something like that. But I feel like a lot of us get too hung up following so-and-so creators and stuff like that. So what do you think about content consumption and should you even listen to people, smart people like even like Alex Hormozzi? Okay. So I have a huge <clears throat> thought thread on something mm -hmm. that incorporates this, that we could delve into, or I could keep it very focused to this topic. I'll let you choose. Huge thought thread. I don't care. Let's do it. Okay. So um, I I'm going to start a little bit esoteric initially. So, I heard of this concept called lineage evolution from a guy named Brett Weinstein, who's um, evolutionary biologist, really interesting guy, has a podcast called The Dark Horse Podcast. I, I used to listen to it quite a lot. I liked it. Um, but basically, he talks about this idea where religions are essentially like lineages and behaviors, like group behavior, warring against each other. So it's basically the idea that like different religions, like religions essentially are like a, a way to program a group's behavior without that group, like the individuals in that group having to like arrive at the same conclusions themselves and like reinvent the wheel, right? Basically it's like mass behavior distribution to a group. So it's like everybody follow this set of rules in this group and we're going to be better for it. And the idea is that those different like behavior sets will naturally, uh, like evolve and and there will be like a, almost like a selection process where like this behavior set will war in the evolutionary uh stage against another one and they will one of them they will either merge or you know a new version will come out of it or one of them will just simply win over the other and it will continue to spread and we have a handful of religions today that's literally what has happened like human psychology has effectively um evolved various religions which are really just mass programs for for groups of people like people it's just like a, a set of rules for different people like islam christianity uh judaism etc hinduism all all of these different uh rule sets um and it got me thinking like you know the other day i was like huh you know all of these different people on the internet like have their own success stories and they put out what worked for them and all of these different rules and stuff, principles that you can follow. Like Ray Dalio, Ray Dalio has a book called Principles, literally just stuff that he has found very valuable in his business career that he thinks can be replicated and achieve positive results for any person in like the investing or uh, in, the, in the investing world or anybody who's interested in like macroeconomics. And so I, I've been thinking about like, huh, is it important to like try to adopt other people's principles so that you can save yourself time and stress so you don't have to reinvent the wheel for yourself? And that kind of comes in, in, into, into the conversation with what you're asking, which is like, mm -hmm. does it make sense to try to adopt other people's principles? Does it make sense to try to learn from them and try to like almost ingrain them such that you don't have to come up with reinvent the wheel on your own? Um, 
And I, I tend to think that like, obviously like a mix is good. Like it's very hard to like really truly believe like a principle that someone else teaches you unless you've like experienced it or learned it yourself or experienced like a reward from using that principle. Like if I use a principle and I got a big reward from it, I'm probably going to like that. I'm going to feel like that's going to be ingrained into my psyche and I'm going to use it going forward and I'm not going to have to think about it much. Um, but a, a lot of times we have to experience things in order to really truly understand certain principles or rules that other people teach. So I, I almost would say like, in 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 the business context it's changing so much that it's really hard to create universal principles and then if you do create a universal principle it's almost like it's going to be so abstracted and so like like here's here's a universal business principle make profit okay great that's a universal bu business principle but how do i do that right then there's like all these other strategies and tactics you can use to get there but those strategies and tactics becomes stale so quickly because the business landscape changes constantly. So I would, I would say like, I would say like you, you either have to be super niche, like just find someone who is doing or has done almost exactly what you're trying to do and like, listen to that person and like just download their entire way of thinking. Um, and then, yeah, I would say like, if you overload yourself with that information, it's probably going to be a waste of your time and you actually could just be distracting yourself from the doing right. There's the learning and there's the doing. Um, the learning is probably a good thing to do on, in the background. Like if you're driving and you can't actually be doing, you could be learning. So put on a podcast of someone that you think provides good information and let them just like in, install their way of thinking into your mind. And then it, it like kind of will serve you a little bit into the future. Um, then there's also the, the way, you know, the other way of thinking about it is like, well, if, if you're just listening to someone else talk, then you're not thinking about your own business and that's a waste of time for, for yourself as well. I think there's a balance. Like, I don't think there's an easy answer there, but I do think it's like, it's helpful. Like if you find someone that is providing good information that you feel like serves you, whether it's serving you just from an emotional perspective of like, oh, in business, you got to like expect these challenges and like think about these things. And this is the way you got to think about obstacles. And this will just help you keep a level head as you go through your business journey. Um, I think those things can actually be really, really powerful. Um, it could also be like tactical things about like how to do certain things in your business, how to handle employees or deal with growing mm -hmm. a team, et cetera. Um, so my answer in short is yes, I think it is important to, to consume, but I also think you need to, you need to balance it well. And, and I would say generally speaking, if you don't know what to do about something, Yes, you should go consult the library of knowledge that exists on the internet. Like, like you were kind of just saying, like, unless yeah. you unless you have a question or you don't know how to do something, you <laughs> shouldn't be consuming. I would almost say, like, I would add one more if to that rule. I would say, if you don't know what you're doing and you and you're struggling to overcome an obstacle, go go consult the library of knowledge that exists mm -hmm. out there. Or if you are like physically like you just like are drained from the doing and you just need to kind of like take a break then then i would say it makes sense to like let yourself do some relaxation by learning um yeah and i think that helps you build like the sort of mental backbone of how to make decisions quickly because and I'll, I'll get to the end of it here but um if you if you spend a year not consuming any of hormozy's content you're probably only going to remember a few of like the core things he talks about and that's a good thing, right? Generally, that's a good thing. It means like you've distilled a lot of the, the important stuff and gotten rid of a lot of the fluff. But sometimes the fluff, which the fluff can contain lots of useful tactical information that you can also get value from. So um, yeah, I would say like mix it, but be very aware of the fact that over-consuming can, can just destroy productivity too. What do you think yeah. of that? For sure. Um, my, my whole thing with this is like, you know, if you're learning to, you know, do a, a double backflip off the diving board, right. And you're just spending like all of your days, like watching the videos, learning about watching other people talk about how to do the diving board, watching other people talk about how to do the diving board, watching other people talk about how to do it. It's like, dude, go try to dive, fail, try again, fail, try again, fail. Oh, I watched a video. You need to tuck here at this point. Oh, okay. Let me implement that. 
and then you do it. 90% of it is action. 10% of it is consulting with the guru, right? Who gives you a tip and then you implement it. It's 90% implementation and pure action. And then, as you said, consulting the library of knowledge. So I just think, and this is, this is not everyone's fault. It's actually how our brain is wired because we are naturally more attracted to entertainment, dopamine, cheap, easy, free, cheap, easy, free dopamine, right? Of feeling, and they call this the MM, mental masturbation. It feels good. It's cheap, easy, free dopamine. We feel like we're being productive, but we're not. We have to do the hard thing, which is facing rejection, going up onto the diving board and knowing we're going to face plant into the water. We have to go up on, you have to go onto the diving board and knowingly face plant into the water 1200 times. That is what you have to do. And obviously your brain is not going to want to do that, but that's really what we have to do. So guys, if anything, um, my thought on this whole thing is like, I think Alex Mosey is great, but let's not become fanboys and let's actually become an army of doers and action takers and uh, people who are okay with failure because we're navigating our own path and we're going to consult with other people who are there along the way. And I, I mean, the only reason I'm talking about Alex Mosey here is because it was the first name that popped into my head. You know, if you're also a business person or an entrepreneur like Chris and I, you know, uh, you probably have heard of Alex Ramosi, right? So that uh, just a relevant name. And honestly, I, I like Alex Ramosi. I think all of this stuff is awesome. But a lot of people are like fanboys, you know, and it's like, cool, man. But like, what are you doing? And Alex talks about this as well. Like, he's like, guys, like, take action, like 100 reach outs, like, do the stuff. Like, you don't have to just watch all my videos. It's just funny. But um, yeah. So I mean, if you guys are entrepreneurs, like you probably know Hormozy. What's another influencer? Elon. But you know, Hormozy's actually like teaching young entrepreneurs. So relevant name. But yeah, Chris. So what do you think? Yeah, if, let us know in else. the comments of other people you like to listen to and watch. Um, yeah. Let us know in the comments. Because I definitely love suggestions. Yeah, I definitely like listening to people talk about uh, business stuff. Um, I've learned a lot, but I just think our brains are just set up in a way that it, it sucks us into content consumption. So just remember, man, 90% implementation, 10% learning. Totally. Yeah. Awesome. Anything. 